What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of our weekly gaming update for Packer gaming update news, which is concerning all update patches, uh, future DLCs, weekly DLC type thing, uh, anything that's basically affecting major games that uh, myself and or Roggle are playing. Um, realistically, if you haven't figured this out, it's mostly me. Uh, my games as Roggle really is kind of a one trick pony. <laughs> I can't wait for him to watch this. Yeah, one trick pony. He loves Call of Duty. Uh, so we will be covering Call of Duty. We'll also be covering uh, World of Warcraft, which has a new DLC coming out, The War Within. Um, debuts August 26th, 2024. Uh, this video is going to be covering all updates for the week of July 15th, 2024. And we are going to be covering, again, games like World of Warcraft, uh, Call of Duty. We're going to uh, look at Baldur's Gate, just released, released a new patch note, um, releasing information concerning Phasmophobia. And uh, Mortal Kombat 1 just released a new playable character. So we got some stuff to cover. It's going to be a little bit of a longer episode. Check the, the description or the little time bar down below uh, if you want to jump to a game that you are more interested in if you're big on call of duty like ruggle you just find the link in the description click on it it'll take you the time slot or just uh scroll through until you get there uh, but otherwise sit back and enjoy i hope you do just i hope you enjoy this type of content and if you do please make sure you hit the like follow and subscribe button or sorry like and subscribe button this is youtube there's no follow like and subscribe button to stay up to date with all future weekly gaming updates when there are some um but with that said my name is sig i'm one half of two guys with gamepad uh we are a podcast channel that really just talks about anything and everything underneath the sun we try not to talk about politics and religion we do make jokes from time to time but that is not a subject of which we uh, actively discuss so if this sounds like something you're interested in which it should be we're funny promise you go check us out new episodes every thursday everywhere you get podcasts including this channel as well and we have two other channels we have our ring rage report which is all about professional wrestling um, go check it out it should be linked up in the top top right of this video um, if it's not check the description as well and then we also will have a video edition of all of our podcast or all, yeah all of the podcast episodes uh, starting with season three over on another channel. Um, it's also on a two guys on game pad video edition, I believe is what we called it. Don't quote me on it. It'll be linked down below um, or top right as well. So without further ado, let's talk about July 15, 2024 weekly gaming update. Let's get after y'all. First game up, of course, is World of Warcraft, as you can see listed down below. Um, and we're just going to be covering the July 15th, which was yesterday's update and patches that went live into effect this morning. Um, and for those of you who, you know, enjoy World of Warcraft like I do, we are literally about a month and a, one month, one week and three days out. Um, so a month and 10 days um, until the next DLC comes out for World of Warcraft. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, it's uh, War Within. Uh, the beta's already been live, and it has been live for some a uh, few weeks now. And it's it's awesome now it's in beta. There are still some, there's definitely still some glitches and uh, bugs that are being worked out. As we'll see, uh, some of the stuff is actually even uh, part of this that overlaps each other. But anyways, uh, War Within has been a lot of fun. I can't wait till it goes live on August 26th and it's going to be exciting. Will I play it on day one? Um, that's a good question. Realistically, no. Um, I've, I've learned my lesson in the past with playing games on day one. They are very seldomly um, non- or, it, there's always issues, what I'm trying to say. There's tons of issues, tons of bugs and everything. Um, and everyone's hopping on it for the first time. Possibly, and you know, after just a few days of being on off because they maxed out all their characters and everything they need to. Or after several years of being gone, like I did, with Dragonflight. So, 
I won't be on it on day one, uh, but week one, I will definitely be on it. And we'll be continuing with the use of my Warlock uh, to continue on that story. Uh, and, but we'll also be continuing on over at the uh, Alliance side of the house as well. So lots to come for that. If you want to see what I'm talking about, if you want to see the gameplay live, uh, come check out my channel, CyberMerkSig, over on Twitch, Kick, YouTube, and TikTok. We go live everywhere. Uh, it's the same channel I live stream for Rogs of My Game Nights every Thursday night. So, uh, but without further ado, let's get into July 15th hot fixes for World of Warcraft. Uh, July 15, 2024. I guess I should, I should specify. I've seen people. Um, anyways, let's get into it. All right, for Season of Discovery, these are the hot fixes for Season of Discovery itself. Activities involving Reginald Windsor event in Stormwind Keep should now complete more reliably when High Lord Boldar Far Dragon, Four Dragon, Lady Katrana Pe Prestor, and Reginald Windsor's are alive. I'm going to butcher a lot of these names, and it is what it is. This is how I say them. Think I'm wrong? That's cool. Correct me, but it is, yeah. Anyways, Hellscream's Phantom should now respawn after an unsuccessful attempt. Uh, fix some ring engraving so that all the benefiting classes can learn them, such as arcane specialization, now learn learnable by druids and hunters. Originally, it was only mages. Defense, now learnable by rogues, warlocks, warriors, paladins, and shaman, was only druids. Um, so that's a big one for me. Frost, now learnable by hunter. Originally, it was only mages. Uh, the correct version of uh, Necromantic Band now drops from the Death Knight Dark Reaver and uh, Sholomance. The Asheville quest clear the forest and repelling invaders have been scaled to level 60. Fix the health and damage creature inside um, Alterac Valley Battlegrounds so they align with outdoor world and dungeon creatures. Fix the bug in UBRS preventing Jed Rune Watcher from spawning. Increase the experience awarded by enemies in Demon Fall Cannon to brave adventurers who enter before reaching level 60. The teleporter to uh, Nomorangan? Gnome? Regan? Nomorangan? Hate that fucking word. Anyways, teleporter Nomorangan will no longer send you to Ashara. Oops, they said. Uh, Blackrock Eruption, the spawn rates of creatures for Blackrock Eruption have been increased. The flame, Flamestone Cluster quest line, or quest item, requires for the quest Oh Shiny has now been added to other Dark Iron creatures in Searing Gorge as well. This is not reflected in quest text. The number of quest que creatures required for some Blackrock Eruption quests have been reduced. Oh, that's freaking awesome. I just did this quest like almost a month ago and was struggling with it because of all this crap. So a little too late now. All right. So that's for season discovery on to um, classes slash races race. Sounds very appropriate. I don't like that. They use that. But anyways, druids, they improve bark skin. No longer uh, improved bark skin. No longer erroneously requires tree form improved swipe combo combined with Blood Frenzy will no longer cause Druids to lose their combo points on their current target when Swipe Cat crits against a target other than their primary target. For Hunters, Hunters can now engrave both the Rune of Nature Specialization and the Rune of Fire Specialization. Wyvern Strikes will no longer return an immune message against targets that are immune to the bleed effect. It will now deal its direct damage but will not apply the bleed paladins fix an issue with hollow grounds that cause multiple paladins using it to generate too many healing events hollow ground will now calculate its healing correctly when wearing items with bonus healing effects calculations for sheets of life now properly includes the attack power multiplier from vindication priest has just one uh, for priests void zone will no longer pull enemies through the floor Shaman, Greater Ghost Wolf Rune now works with the Rolling Thunder Rune Discovery. 
Lava Lash will now correctly gain bonus damage from the extended duration of Flame Tongue, weapon rank 6. Uh, on Warriors, Sebastian Jurgens will now despawn for only 30 seconds after a player turns in, booking it back. The quest item carried for booking it back will now be pushed to players after they re-accept the quest. Guided Buoyancy Accelerant will now be offered to players on Lost and Found who have completed Poacher's Den. Infinite Midnight should now always be completable at Konosu. Konsu, there we go. Warlock. The number of charges on Shadow Flames application of Shadow Vulnerability has now or has been increased to 30 total charges. It was 10. Explorer Amps should now have an easier time traveling to the Legion Prison World Nis Niskara. Ugh. And then lastly, this is for World of Warcraft Classic Era and Hardcore. They fixed an issue permitting certain dungeon upgrade quests from being able to be accepted from Delania in Iron Forge and Mok. Mokvar and Ogomar. So that's all we have for um, World of Warcraft. Again, War Within is coming out August 26th. Uh, so it's literally one month, 10 days away, and it's it's exciting. I'm I'm ready for it. I have it pre-purchased. I can't wait for this to drop. Um, go check out, or not check out, sorry. Yeah, go check out World of Warcraft if you haven't uh, played it in quite some time. It's definitely worth uh, getting back into it. And of course, if you do play, feel free to let us know. Comment down below in the chat, um, DM us, or reach out on my my gamer network, Cybermarksig, and just let me know. I'm always looking for people to play, and I'm trying, trying really, really hard to get Roggle's ass back into this. But he needs to get his computer turned on. So there's that. But onward to the next game. All right, next up is Boulder Gate 3, Patch 7. Uh, these are early patch notes. Uh, again, you can find all this online by doing some Google research. I'm just trying to condense this all down into one video for y'all. Uh, so let's get after it. There's a lot to cover. Some in-depth some, some in stuff. Other, not so much. So we'll go after it. So one big update that's coming is split screen updates. Dynamic split screen mode is incoming with their next updates, friends will no longer be eternally confined to their side of the screen because the power of friendship transcends all obstacles, including screen partitions. Uh, when playing co-op, you'll now have the option to do split screen merge into a single screen when you hear one another, or when you're near one another, sorry, you can access this directly from the HUD and within the game settings, both in and out of combat. That is a big one that's been asked for, uh, it's basically since the game came out, um backtrack a little bit fucked up uh boulder gate 3 patch 7 will be released in september of 2024 you can register um july 22nd 2024 uh for beta um if they grant you access to it you'll be able to so september 24th split screens coming so um honor mode improvement Continuing to make improvements to combat and honor mode too. With patch seven, even more creatures have been bestowed additional le legendary actions, including the Boulette, everyone's favorite neighbor neighborhood surgeon, Malice Thorm. Um, oh my God, these names I can't pronounce. Gith Yankee, Cryotech Zakin. Oh, I'm butchering all these. Uh, Rakar. Tra. Harrock and Taurus. Oh, I hate these names. This is why I love this game. I love it. Fucking names are hard. <laughs> For Ragslin will now also be able to use new spells called Arachnid Compulsion to rally the spiders that reside in nearby pits to fight the real enemy. You. Um, Baldur's Gate modding toolkit. Uh, with this update also comes an official modding toolkit toolkit so coming come september you'll be able to load up your game with a range of new mods and even try your hand at making some yourself uh, they do recommend going to the modding faq for more information on what modding support means for Baldur's gate 3. currently working with Baldur's gate 3 mods author during a closed alpha who've been busy testing the toolkit to find out 
what some of the mod authors have been working on during the closed alpha. So uh, the toolkit itself will give you everything you need to edit or create entirely new content, including items, cosmetic classes and subclasses, races, dice, skins, user interface and quality of life improvements. Uh, with patch seven, they're also bringing several new cinematics that will offer you more evil playthrough on a grander finale. Uh, from the Avatar origin characters, including the Dark Urge, to the multiple different pathways that you can take to make your own your own player character, each new cinematic is yours to discover through nefarious means. While we don't want to give any, well, sorry, this is them. While they don't want to give anything away just yet, you can feast your eyes on teasers um, on their website. So more will be coming on that soon. They fix bugs with Dark Urge along with the new evil ending Simax coming this patch. They've introduced a number of improvements and bug fix for our Dark Urge players. Ironing out camera pops, missing inspiration, BB, BFX, and other issues as well. Um, they have fixed a lot of origin characters that have been having bugs as well. This update will see improvements made to some cinematic in dialogue ending in game dialogue and origin characters specifically things like clipping issues a couple of broken triggers requests dialogues and romances the odd case of retrograde amnesia and persistent exclamation marks um, blade of frontiers will no longer absent mindedly swing his sword mere inches from the aurora of the shorter races who tried to recruit him um, you have these are just some of the highlights will highlights um Patch 7 includes a heap of fixes for Will, ranging from improvements to his dialogue, reactivity to fixes of romance scenes, um, triggers, cosmetics, and more. Basically, cosmetics, trigger, uh, romance dialogue, activity dialogue, speaking, text, all that is getting massive updates to Will, to Astri Ast Astrion. Mm. Bazell, Carlock, Gale, Shadowheart, um, all getting those. And then party banner improvement. improvement. Prior to this update, party banner between companion characters was limited to characters controlled by a single player. In patch 7, multiplayer parties will support banner between characters assigned to different players. This patch will resolve issues that had been rendering some romance party banner inaccessible while adventuring. Uh, so yeah it's closed beta starts july 22nd you can apply on larion studio's website larion studio also invited mod authors to join the closed alpha prior to patch 7 comes out mod authors like padme 4000 include included her dragonborn scale color mods tech root worked with the fear and color mods and lost souls to test the toolkits you guys to provide extra so there's a lot of fixes mostly sounds like it's ui uix uh f or vfx some dialogue um, but this is a much needed patch so hopefully it works i can't wait to see what comes out and i'm excited to get back into it with the nefarious evil endings um, and also to test out some mod kits myself see see if i can do anything on my own so let's get on to the next game all right, onward to Phasmophobia. This is actually going to be a very quick segment of this. Uh, Phasmophobia uh, announced this a few days ago, but it all falls into this week's updates. Uh, it's for console updates. And this is from their dev reports that, again, you can find on Steam if you're on PC, or you can just go to their website as well. Um, but it says, hey, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters, we've got some news for you, and it's exciting. First, we want to thank everybody. Okay, they're thanking everybody. Um, Neither here nor there. Development. They have been collaborating with Unity to work on console release as well as general performance um, optimization for both console and PC. This will ensure that the console updates run optimal, optimally and to the high standards that we have set for the game. Working with them means that we can work alongside them on new content for all platforms, allowing for faster developments of this new updates. Future updates of the game will be released on all platforms simultaneously to ensure that crossplay is always available. Uh, this is big, Unity's a big player in the in the industry, so this is amazing that they are finally working with them. Uh, 
when is the question. Um, they are thrilled to announce that the console updates will be released this year during their in-game Halloween event. Uh, once launched, all players will have access to crossplay, allowing you to play the newest version of the game with everyone, including those using VR systems as well. Uh, this is a big deal. We've been asking for this for years. Uh, and there's always been talk about console updates and console coming, but there's never been like a definitive timestamp. It's just been like it's coming soon. Uh, the Halloween event is a very big deal with Phasmophobia. Um, if you haven't played this game, it's a ghost hunting game. And it's you can play by yourself solo or you can play up with a team of four uh, and it's just a lot of fun you're trying to hunt ghosts figure out who the ghost or what type of ghost it is uh, find all the evidence as well and so much more it's a lot of fun this is a game i've personally been trying to get uh roggle to play as well uh he doesn't have his pc up and running don't ask me why i do not know we talk about this with every episode uh but if he still doesn't have it up and running by the halloween event it, I'm, I'm going to make this motherfucker play it. So that's it. Uh, here are some answers for the most frequently asked questions that they've been noting from their community for the console updates. First off, will console support voice recognition? Because the PC does. At the current stage of development, console players will be required to use a text input for voice recognition. Um, they are still working on a solution for this and they will announce if this changes. I, I, I feel like this is going to change. So as of right now, no, but yes, type thing. Um, the game, how much is it going to cost? They will have to increase the price of Phasmophobia for all platforms later this year to $19.99 due to the amount of content and playtime added since the start early access. I mean, this is fair because when this game originally came out, um, it was like five bucks, I think it was, if that. I got on it early. Like, I think myself... Uh, Jay and, and his his significant other and a few others like we all got on around the same time uh, and it was only it was maybe like two to five dollars so it being twenty dollars again still a steal because it's an amazing fucking game they could have easily have charged forty fifty dollars for it um, especially going to console but twenty bucks not a bad deal at all uh, what's the age rating of this sixteen plus slash teens yeah it's that's a change there. Uh, they have no plans to be on Game Pass. So womp womp type situation for people who rely so heavily on Game Pass. Currently, it's not going to be on Game Pass. But again, all this information can change on the drop of a dime. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, what updates will be released or what updates will console release with? All flat platforms will be on the current major version 0 0.10 at console release. New content such as a farmhouse rework will release afterwards. Um, of course, if you have any other further questions or you want to look into this yourself, all you have to do is go to Kinetic Games website or go on Steam or find them on Twitter. Uh, they do a really good job of keeping everything updated. Um, Halloween, of course, is just a few months away, so I'm excited for this. Um, I'm excited for the possibility of a new freaking game for Rago to, to play with me on Thursday. So, uh, But let me know what you think about this, and let's go to the next game. All right, and onward to the next game, which is Call of Duty. Um, this is going to be a, a bloody jam-packed one. There's a lot of stuff to cover in this one. Uh, again, you can find this one at callofduty.com forward slash blog, and you can see the latest update. Uh, but with that said, they released the roadmap for Season 5, which starts July 24th, uh, so next week from the recording of this episode. Uh, but we're getting... A lot um, so there's going to be uh, four free base weapons six aftermarket parts uh, mid-season return of resurgent supreme to rebirth island the arrival of valeria and ivan um, alex of e. i'm sure i butchered that one as battle pass operators plus an impressive roster of wwe superstars including rhea ripley the american nightmare cody rhodes and ray mysterio himself uh, so there's a huge roadmap that they release, so we're gonna we're gonna dive into it. We're gonna get after it. So starting off with Modern Warfare Three overview, the, with what they release, um, two brand new maps will be released there for six v six style. Um, two maps and diverse core six v six maps arrive in season five, whisking you to a sunny dock in Florida. Uh, there's the bait map. Um, it will launch again next week 
Um, you also have yard match or yard map. Sorry, map, not match. Um, so yeah, batch. Bloody hell, bait map is a medium sized six v six map. Let's see how many times I can butcher all this stuff. Um, has twisting layouts that provide endless tactical opportunities for every place how whether long range medium range or close range they have it for you in that map uh the yard map is small size this is going to be again 6v6 at the core map uh, it's going to offer more of a tight flanking path down the map uh, taking place in open areas as well like in the center but this is going to be more of your close range style map um, there's also going to be a cell ship at launch. Uh, this is a variant map um, of rust, not rust, sorry, of shipyard. Shipment, there we go. Bloody hell. Ugh, apologies. It's a long day already. Um, again, shipment, it's a variant of that called cell ship, and it's going to be, again, 6v6, still small. It's very bright and vibrant compared to... Uh, shipment right now is very dark and gloomy, so this is basically polar opposites. So that's really cool. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to see, I guess. Another variant map called Tunoxide. Uh, this is a variant of the map Rust. Um, both of these have like a very cartoonish design to them, uh, whereas cell, uh, cell Ship will be bright and vibrant. Um, Tune Oxide for Rust is going to be kind of like your gray, uh, old school comic book style design. Still some pops of colors, but still, you know, it's more on the darker side. But again, think comic book. Um, another variant is Ink House. This will come mid season. Again, this is for the Palato at Stash House. Uh, they're going to basically reshade it. Again, this is going to look very comic book esque design um it's ink style so three new maps or sorry two new maps three variants uh, between next week and mid-season so that's what the roadmap is for that uh, multiplayer mode will introduce slam deathmatch call of duty warrior mini game mayhem and fish fish faction and more uh, the slam deathmatch is the collaboration between call of duty and wwe uh, it says, I'm going to quote it. All right. It says, wrestle up your finest finishing moves in the spin of traditional deathmatch. It's still all about elimination and slam deathmatch. But in this mode, weapons can only down your enemies to earn points. You must finish off opponents by hitting them with a finisher move. All finishing moves will be randomized WWE finishing moves in upcoming slam deathmatch brawls. And the mode will only be available during the WWE SummerSlam event, which is starting July 31st. All finishing moves will be randomized WWE finishing moves. Uh, oh yeah, that's just a repeat. Way to freaking repeat that. So, um, so this is in collaboration with WWE with the upcoming uh, Premier Live event they have going in uh, August for SummerSlam. All right, and then another game mode, Arcade Playstyle. Uh, power up with the return of arcade featuring two new strategic strategic abilities and several exciting new power weapons in addition all arcade players will benefit from increased jump height and ability to slam non-damaging too quickly and return to the ground um, abilities two new abilities will arrive in arc with arcade this season players can ground slam dueling out damage in an area effect upon landing from the jump is successfully completed within a range of enemies the blow can be lethal. Uh, force field is a defense ability, creating a transparent bubble around the players that defend them against incoming bullets. As a force field absorbs more damage, it eventually will be destroyed. For weapons, deliver the pain with five new power weapons, each with a unique effect. Sledgehammer melee, increased knockback ability. Minigun battle rage ability. More sniper rifle, explosive knockback effect. The tear pistol, akimbo snake shot, dragon's breath. Oh, that's going to be fucking nasty. Uh, push dagger melee big lunge ability um, they're also introducing another game mode called uh, call of duty or sorry cod warrior um, cod warrior is a new mode that will put three teams of two so 2v2v2 two two two, to the test in a series of randomized quick fire mini games each every round wins 
one point. The first team to reach five points takes the game. Um, so that could be really fun if you're big into like gun game and you um, want a little bit more strategy, I guess. I don't know what word I'm looking for. Uh, in my head, it's if you want more of a hard time, uh, 2v2v2. So six players, two on each team, three teams total. Uh, Call of Duty or COD Warrior mini games uh, will be beat up the car. So you get 60 seconds. Oh, that's good. Okay, listen, this is going to be a lot of fun because this looks like Street Fighter's version of it, but uh, better because you get weapons. Anyways, beat up the car. Round time, 60 seconds. Each team spawns in with sledgehammers and a vehicle. First team to destroy their car wins. Uh, Breacher Ball. Round time is also 60 seconds. All operators are provided with unlimited breacher drones as their only um, arm armament survive to win. Bullet time, round time is again 60 seconds. Test your reflex against extremely low velocity weapons, allowing you to better sidestep and evade enemy fire, survive to win. Shoot, round time is 30 seconds. Spawn in a circle with every operator wielding the powerful tier handgun, draw fast and survive to win. Don't shoot, round time is 60 seconds. Listen closely, in this variant, everyone spawns in the circle with tier handgun equipped. Anyone who shoots, however, will die on the spot. Survive to win. Drone War. Round time, 60 seconds. All operators spawn with storm, storm enders and bomb drones. Survive to win. Fragged. Round time, 60 seconds as well. Settle things explosively in this minigame where all operators are provided with unlimited frag grenades only. The Hunt. Round time, 60 seconds. Operators are assigned to the role of hunter or runner. Hunters must eliminate the runner who have no weapons to fight back. Knives. Round time, 60 seconds. Operators spawn with knives only. Survive the win. Quote, meta, unquote, loadout. Uh, round time, 60 seconds. Do your best in this ironic take on the meta as operators duke it out with poorly optimized loadouts. Survive the win. That could be fun. Uh, mini guns for everyone. Round time 60 seconds. Prepare for brutal combat as each operator is provided as a juggernaut suit and a mini gun. Survive to win. Uh, all these are survive to win. I'm going to stop saying that. Last ninja standing. Round time 60 seconds. Operators battle with throwing stars only while benefiting from increased movement speed and jump height. Revive. Round time 60 seconds. Each team spawns with a downed operator. The first team to locate and revive their downed operator wins. These are sounding pretty cool and pretty fun, honestly. Uh, shocking, round time 60 seconds. Push through the pain in this mini game. All operators must battle under the permanent effect of a shock stick. Bring it, do it to myself all the time. Turret time, round time. Oh, sorry. Shocking, round time was 90 seconds. My bad. Um, turret time, round time is also 90 seconds. All operators are provided with storm enders and remote turrets to to win. Um, these are all part of the COD mini games so cod warriors and then there's mini games within that um so there are how I many did i read off one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen mini games mode underneath cod warriors and honestly uh i this sounds like a revival type method and it sounds so much like so much fun I am honestly excited for it. I, I can't wait till next week and I can't wait for mid season and all that for this to just keep going. Um, can I get Rago to play these modes? Probably the fuck not. Probably not. Let's just be real. But they sound like a lot of fun. And I can't wait to try them out. Um, the game modes mid seasons. Uh, mid season will bring fi fish faction. Avoid the hook in this slippery twist on infected. Equipped with only compound bow and spear as your weapon in Fish Faction, where it's your goal to prevent getting eliminated by bloodthirsty school of fish operators composed of previously fallen players. Uh, they also bring you paintball. Paintball player uh, predominantly on small maps and in game modes, capture the flag and kill confirm. Give players increased movement ability for the duration of the mode and replace all bullet impact with paint splatters. This means every weapon is a one shot, so take cover on bunkers of choice and get ready for some quick action painting. Again, that sounds like fun. This sounds like fun. Am I getting excited for a Call of Duty season? Like, are we for real? I don't I don't normally give two shits about their multiplayer. I just play them to complete my weeklies, but this sounds like fun. Next game mode. Again, these are all mid-season. It looks like there's three of them. 
Um, last one is Diffuse and Destroy. Or sorry, Diffuse or Destroy. Um, expect an explosive twist on Search and Destroy at mid-season 2. In this round-based objective mode, teams take turn attacking and defending bomb sites. The twist this mode round starts with a bomb already planted in one of the two possible locations, putting a literal ticking time bomb into a into play as teams alternate to defend and defuse. I don't care for search and destroy. Um, I won't probably play defuse or destroy, but it, it sounds like an interesting twist and sounds like it could be a lot of fun if I'm being honest. So um, I'm happy to see the twist. I'm honestly happy to see all this stuff right now. We have so fucking more uh, multiplayer rank play intel, uh, rank rewards, season rewards, and end of season rewards. Okay, nothing's really changed there. It's just, uh, it looks like rank players, you can unlock a new blueprint. Does it say what the blueprint is for? It does not, and I'm not. Oh, here we go. New Season 5 competitor, Competitor's Reward, 5 wins, Modern Warfare 3 Season 5 Competitor Weapon Sticker, 10 wins, Pro Reissue MCW Weapon Blueprint, 25 wins, Smell of Victory Weapon Charm, 50 wins, Modern Warfare 3 uh, SR Monster Weapon Decal, 75 wins, Modern Warfare 3 Rank Play Season 5 Loading Screen, and 100 wins will grant you Modern Warfare 3 Season 5 Rank Veteran Weapon Camo. Um... Camo, I don't know. I think this all looks stupid. I don't care about ranked either, so I'm biased here, but I mean they look cool. I like the I like the the camo. But I don't play I don't I don't play ranked. I don't, so um new skill five division rewards, bronze will get you okay, so yeah, it's all the same. It's just season five version. So you get season five bronze, silver, gold. And then once you get gold, you get gold weapon camo plus an animated emblem. And then once you hit platinum, you get uh, animated emblem weapon camo. Same with diamond and crimson and um, iridescent. Once you hit iridescent though, you also get a calling card that's animated. And then if you are in the top 250, you get um, animated emblem, animated calling card, animated weapon camo, don't care. Um, New tactical EMP grenade. Uh, this deactivates enemy electronics and disrupts enemy sensors for a short time. Even if there's no, even if no equipment is affected, you'll still negatively impact the HUD of the enemy caught in the blast, making a good tool to dis, uh, disorient. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited for that. Um, especially after last night, Rogue was just giving me a lot of shit for not using my tacticals. Uh, Modern Warfare zombies. A uh, quick overview. The end is here. Descend into the dark ether to a uh, disrupt and sir, sever the link between Dr. Jansen and the entity. Experience a gravity defying dark ether arena featuring um, Ethereum, launch pads, and all new boss. Brave the dark ether, unlock new replayable experience, and earn three new sch uh, schematics. Can you survive the horrors ahead? Uh, so they're talking about the final story within zombies. Uh, new secrets and schematics will come mid season. The schematics will be the disciple bottle, grenade, uh, Bandoler, I'm Bandulier. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I'm sure I am. And then the stash increase. Uh, the disciple bottle span, spawns a friendly disciple to wreak havoc against your ho foes. <laughs> your hoes. <laughs> uh, uh, the grenade Bandulier replenishes your lethal and tactical tactical events over time. Equipment over time. Sorry, allowing you to regularly bombard enemies. The stash increase, it just stat, uh, increases your stash to 30, so you can loot more. Call of Duty overview for Warzone. Um, hot drop is coming. Get ready or get some retail therapy as the infamous Superstore POI returns to Call of Duty Warzone in Yurzikstan. Um, new modes and event. Compete in new modes like Superstore Resurgence and Supreme Resurgence on Rebirth Island. Test your skill in new public events and tackle new features like the redeploy drone beacon and elite contracts. Rank play, gain bragging rights, and all new season rank play on Rebirth featuring new skill division rewards for dedicated com uh, competitors. Again, your stand is getting the Superstore. Uh, the Superstore is the same one that was in Verdansk back in War uh, Warzone 1. So this will be built into your your stand. Ugh. So this is Roggle's favorite uh, POI. 
that we were talking about last night during our random gaming session. And so he's a, he's super fucking excited for this. I was the one that got to break the news for him. So that's amazing. Um, it's going to be just south of the military base. And it will be located in the upper central eastern side of Yurzikstan. Um, so lots of stuff that's going to go on there. And then we have... Warzone modes, features, and public events. Again, Superstore Resurgence will be taking place in Yurzikstan. I'm excited to finally have Resurgence in Yurzikstan. I'm done with Reverse Vondel and all that crap. Um, Supreme Resurgency, which will take place on Rebirth Island. Uh, public event, Bounty Contest, Resurgence mode at launch. Prepare heat of battle when the Bounty Contest public event activates an Resurgence. Okay, so you just got to compete against other people for picking up the bounty quick. Uh, whoever has the best streak, it looks like. New features, redeploy drone beacon, RDB. Field upgrade all modes. Throw out a line when you need it and use it using the new portable RDB. Field upgrade, once deployed, it can be used by the whole squad to evade incoming dangers, seek out new looting areas, or reposition for a stronger attack. Oh, that could be helpful. Um, elite contracts. This is mid season. Yeah. So coming mid season is the elite contracts. Uh, elite cash drops into the AO with bonus XP, cash, and one of the following abilities Force, Foresight Kill Streak, Multiple Redact Weapons, Specialist Perk Package, and Advanced UAVs. Uh, new public event also coming mid season Recon Flyover. Uh, no place to hide recon flyover, so get out there and fight with this event. As activate two ways of advanced UAVs highlighted scan operators as red player arrows with the recon zone shown as red circles on your main maps and fly towards them. If you're caught in this recon, you'll be exposed to other players. Use until to reassess your plan, seeking the best ground to engage in the danger. Oh, that sounds like a pain in the butt. Okay. Then on to Warzone Season 5 ranked. Blech hate it all right in the order here are the season five kills or assists and placement rewards get 25 kills or assists you get the uh, season five competitor weapon sticker get 250 kills or assists you get a uh, loading screen get a thousand kills or assists you get ranked veteran camo placed in the top 15 25 times you get sr monster weapon decal placed in the top five 25 times Pro issue SOA subverter weapon blueprint. Uh, place first straight fire weapon charm. Blueprint's really the only thing that may be worth a damn. Uh, the end season rewards for season five are awarded based on your highest skill division placement. So if you're in bronze and silver, you get an emblem. If you hit gold, you get animated emblem plus a weapon charm. Platinum, diamond, and crimson, you get animated emblem plus a weapon charm. Iridescent, you get uh, anime emblem, anime calling card, and weapon charm. In the top 250, you get anime emblem, anime calling card, weapon charm. And if you're number one overall, you will get a, a season five number one overall anime emblem as well as an anime calling card. Again, I I personally don't care about rank. I I I think I can speak on behalf of Rogers. I don't think he gives a damn either. So yeah. Anyways, uh, season five called you war zone rewards, combat expertise, acquire your loadout and get hunting, earn rewards for taking the fight to the enemy and surviving to the end, cooperation, um, assemble your squad, work together to eliminate enemies and share cash, mobility, get out and explode the map, move fast and far to acquire the rewards of this category, redacted, sometimes operators must do with limited MLs, intel, wow, intel, Puzzle out the redacted challenges to reap the reward. These are there are four challenges in each of these categories. Reward given after completing every challenge. Unlock a new weapon camo as the final reward in each, including iron ore for completed combat expertise, rose quartz for completing cooperation, all speed for completing mobility, and decipher for completing redacted. Uh, new season five players will also earn mastery reward weapon blueprints upon completing all 16 challenges wield the sport icon bruin mk9 lmg a black and white precision blueprint featuring the jack glassless optic aftermarket part and a 60 round mag for sustained fire i don't think i'm excited for that all right and then there's some um, mobile overview 
Uh, Warzone Mobile, let's just look at the overview. The Unified Battle Royale experience continue with new seasonal content line with Season 5 Call of Duty Warzone and Modern Warfare 3. Drop into meat, drop into meat, a small size slaughterhouse first debuted in Modern Warfare 3. Explored the several new POIs across for dance, including the outposts offering a chance to loot up in otherwise remote areas. And then jump into practice on to test your weapon pre-deployment, play the frontline MP mode, collect heavyweight badges, and become a legend in the WB theme event and more. Um, so yeah, overview overall, unified season five content. Um, let's see, multiplayer core six v six map meet. Um, it's remastered. It's coming. Uh, small size six v six again. Um, and then we have our dance map update. New POIs and outposts. Season five brings some changes to the Verdance landscape. This is all still mobile, by the way. Um, so yeah. So. The zoo has been added, train wreck, construction site, cliffside base, government building, new outposts, um, yeah, new modes and features, multiplayer, frontline mode, battle royale practice zone, uh, updated feature event store. Um, yeah, so it just looks like there's a bunch of events coming to mobile. So then this says connected content overview, Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare Zombie, Warzone, and Warzone Mobile. Here's the overview of that. Four free weapons. Unlock two weapons for free at the launch of Season 5 via the Battle Pass. Two more arrive later in the season that can pin enemies, operators up against a wall. Amp, amp it up. Access new six new aftermarket parts arriving throughout the Season 5, including the Jack Wide Mouth Barrel for the Moore Sniper Rifle and other devastating configuration. As if the Moors is not already fucking broken let's just beef it up even more um black cell steal yourself for the reckoner season five loading black cell operating featuring a ghostly veil that occasionally reveals the phantom within use this uh, accompanying black cell finishing move to settle the score for good operators valeria joins wwe superstar rhea ripley aka mommy alongside ivan alexity the man who led the mission to free uh macarvro Makarov, there we go, Makarov. Unlike these and other rewards in Season 5 Battle Pass, including additional operator skins, weapon blueprints, COD points, and many more. In store, expand your all star ro roster with WWE icons, American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and Rey Mysterio joining the epic lineup of other store bundles. Events and more rule the ring and then and unlock new content across weekly events like the WWE SummerSlam. Keep the competitive spirits alive by tuning into COD Bowl 5 and climbing those prestige ranks all the way to level 1050 to reach new rewards for committed grinders, aka Ronald. <laughs> all right, let's get into some weapon. Again, this is a very long part, so I do apologize. Um, Weapon detail, static HV, submachine gun launch, battle pass, sector 6, uh, levels 18, battle pass, blueprint, level uh, sector 17. Uh, you will get the STG, which is an assault rifle. Again, these are all available at launch right now. Uh, it is in battle pass sector 7, has 21 levels, and there's a blueprint on sector 19. Uh, spear, which is just that, it's a spear. It's a melee weapon. It comes mid-season via BP... Sector unlocked and challenges. It only has six levels. Uh, and then we have the Torque 35, which is a launcher. Comes mid-season weekly challenge. Uh, has only six levels. All right. And then we have six new aftermarket parts. Launch in season Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare Zombie, Warzone, and Warzone uh, Mobile. Yep. Uh, we have WZM Connect, Warzone Mobile Connected. So all season five aftermarket parts are also unlockable to the season arsenal coins and the arsenal store call of duty mobile only so okay we have the jack wide mouth barrel which is compatible with the more sniper rifle modern warfare 3 jack slash compatibility many weapons with under barrel compatibilities this under barrel vertical grip doubles as a combat knife for placing your melee attack with a lethal slash all right oh I didn't read the ability of the wide mouth. My bad. Back it up. Jack wide mouth 
barrel for the Moors is a wide mouth barrel crafted to accommodate magnetic ball bearings that shatter upon firing, creating a barrage of small and lethal projectiles. Fucking great. That's going to be nasty. I'm going to use it. Uh, Jack Protein. Protein? There we go. Uh, it's for the RAAL LMG. This conversion kit turns the RAL into a highly adaptable prototype weapon with a telescoping barrel that can be toggled between full auto and semi auto, off of offering suppressive fire and precision in the same weapon. We will also get the Jack Cataclysm for the RPK, uh, which is compatible with the RPK LMG. Stupid writing there. Uh, Command the Battlefield with this 50 cal conversion kit for the RPK. Slow down, uh, slow yet powerful with high capacity drum rounds. This kit is your enemy's nightmare. That's going to be nasty. Uh, the Jack Dav Devastator, which is compatible with the Reclaimer 18 shotgun, which came at the end of, or I guess this, this current week, last week, whatever, of uh, season four. Uh, but dual wield, oh, fucking Christ. Okay. Do wield Reclaim 18 shotguns and become a mobile artillery barrage with its aftermarket part. Accuracy and recoil control are minimum, but destruction is maximum. Oh my god. So you can dual wield the Reclaimer 18. Awesome. Fucking awesome. That's going to be broken in Warzone, so get ready for that, people. Uh, Jack. Death March is compatible with the Ball 27 Assault Rifle. This aftermarket part replaces standard ammo with high voltage power cells and the barrel with a photonic scatter barrel. Fire a spread of lethal laser blasts that takes down enemies at short range. Holy shit. These are actually pretty, other than I hate the shotgun, but that's pretty nasty all in all. Um, let's see. So Black Cell owners, okay, so we're now in the Black Cell and Battle Pass. Uh, you get Black Cell owners can enter the Season 5 battle, battle map through exclusive Black Cell sectors, instantly unlocking 20 battle tokens, tier skips, and the following items. You'll be issued 1100 COD points, long live the King Black Cell blueprint for the Supri SMG with Inquisitor Tracer and Divine Enforcement Death Effects. Uh, Malice Black Cell blueprint for the Sledgehammer melee weapon with the Inquisitor Impact and Divine Enforcement uh, Dismemberment. Reckoner, Operator, and Judge, Jerry, and Finisher, which is a finishing move. Uh, Black Cell owners will also encounter additional Black Cell exclusive rewards within Season 5 Battle, pa Battle Pass, including 11 Operator skins for Valeria, who will get two, Mommy, who will get two, Bantam, Byline, Enigma, Price, Hammer, Ivan, and Jet, seven animated weapon blueprints. Players who upgrade Battle Cell after purchasing the Battle Pass will also receive 1,100 COD points back. Um... So, yeah, Season 5 is packed with content fed and champion, 110 pieces of unlockable content, including Black, not including Black Cell, sorry, two free base weapons, new SMG for Sector 6 and Assault Rifle in Sector 7, two new operators, Mommy, aka Rhea Ripley, an instant reward sector, and Ivan in Sector 16, um, new skins for uh, Valeria and Mommy, they each get two, Banta Bylon, yeah, I already read that. Um, so yeah, getting a lot. We get the store again. That's a POI. And uh, inside the store, like uh, Call of Duty store, you can purchase the American Nightmare bundle and Rey Mysterio. Uh, so you'll get that as an operator. He will. Cody Rhodes is a tracer pack, or will come with a tracer pack. It says. Not seeing anything about Rey Mysterio. Yep, he will also be a Tracer pack. Cool. There is a Toon Force 141 bundle. Uh, again, it's all drawn in like comic book tune style ink design, which is just how those variant maps are earlier. There will also be a Tracer pack, Underboss Pro pack. You will also get, they have other Season 5 offerings, including the upcoming Tracer pack, Sock Puppets, Tracer pack, uh, Aban Festival, Wildlife Wanted Codfish Mastercraft, Tracer Pack Black Hole, and more. Um, sock Puppet looks a little creepy, not gonna lie. So we have weekly challenges week one through, or one, two, three, and four, six, seven will offer a new aftermarket part, six in total. Week five, the Torque 35 will come out, new base weapon, compound bow. At week eight to round it all up, you get a weapon blueprint. Um, season five prestige and weapon prestige challenges. 
uh, Prestige 18, unlock at rank 19, or 900, sorry. Uh, Prestige 19, unlock at 950. Prestige 20, unlock at 1000. Prestige 21, uh, 1050. And then you get Weapon Prestige Camo. It looks like they're coming out with four more. Uh, they look awesome, not gonna lie. So, yeah. It looks like that is pretty much it. Uh, you can upgrade at any time the vault edition is still available for black ops 6 there's so so much more uh black ops 6 beta begins august 30 30th um if you pre-ordered black ops 6 you get early access otherwise open beta is september 6th through september 9th so again early access august 30th to september 4th open beta is september 6th through september 9th uh, and if you pre-order that, again, we're not sponsored. I'm just making sure you guys are aware of this. You get a Hunters versus Hunted Operator Pack. You get Master Crafted Weapons and more. So definitely go check it out. Um, season 5, just from reading this for the last 30 minutes, is shaping up to be, honestly, to be amazing. It looks amazing. It sounds amazing. More, more along the lines of multiplayer sounds amazing, in my opinion. Um, the aftermarket parts are going to be... Uh, the freaking disgusting there's a new bow coming to it there's a new spear uh new assault rifle new S, uh, smg so it's it's going to be jam-packed regardless um yeah i i'm i'm excited for this i am i think it's the first time i'm legitimately excited for a, a seasonal launch and can't wait will i get black cell operator pack yeah i do every time why not? Uh, so excited. Can't wait. And I can't wait for uh, Rogue and I to be able to play it. But season five is still next week. July 24th is when it comes out. Uh, so we're finishing up season four right now. And there's just, there's so much to do still. So but without further ado, let's move on to the next game. Potentially. Move on. That's Call of Duty. Uh, their blog post that they just released earlier today. So, on the next one. All right, and to wrap this whole extremely long weekly update for the week of July 15th, we're going to wrap this up with Fortnite. Uh, talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean crossover release date, skins, and unbolted items. So let's get into it. Uh, Fortnite announced that the Pirates of the Caribbean collaboration will arrive July 19th as revealed by Epic Games after accidentally releasing the Cursed Sales event past early. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love when they when people fuck up like that. Um, while the event pass was pulled from the item shop, players who already purchased it will be able to retain it, but it won't be able to progress through the levels until it goes live on schedule date. Uh, there's been leaked map changes for the Pirates crossover. Uh, it says leaks revealed that the Pirates of the Caribbean event will get a dedicated landmark once the Fortnite event goes live. The landmark will include the iconic Black Pearl ship along with the pier featuring Davy Jones' flag at the center of the island. Apart from Black and Pearl, massive sunken ships will also be seen in the area. The leaks also suggest that Captain Barboza NPC will be present in this POI. All Pirates of the Caribbean skin, Elizabeth Swan, Davy Jones, and Captain Barboza are currently available in the Fortnite item shop, and you can purchase them individually or as a complete bundle. Um, Jack Sparrow skin will be available in the event pass, which is scheduled to go live July 19th. Um, and then we have new and unbalted items in Pirates of the Caribbean crossover event. The Flint, Flint Knock Pistol is currently available on the island, but Epic Games has also confirmed that the treasure maps and pirate cannon will be unvaulted once the crossover goes live. A new mythic item is scheduled to also go live, which is a ghost pirate ship players can ride to damage enemies, vehicles, and destruction. Uh, there was leaked footage shown of this item in action, but again, Epic is likely to make some changes before adding to the season. Um, Apart from Battle Royale, it also suggests that the new map called the Pirates Adventure will be added to the Rocket Racing mode as well. We'll uh, they'll make sure to update this once there's more information. But a lot of crossovers, including the one with Fall Guys, the new Jujitsu uh, Kaisen characters, will also go live in the game soon. Apart from that, there's a T60 Power Armor and the Nuka Cola from Fallout are currently available in the game alongside X Men, Magneto Skin, and Mythic. So. Fortnite 
short, sweet, simple, wrapped up. Um, it's funny, most of this came out because of leak, and they kind of just fucked up. Um, so, not even, a, not even a leak. You can honestly say they just they posted it, so it was, they revealed it by accident. But uh, was it on purpose? I don't know. It's kind of one of those things of hmm, no, or there's no such thing as bad publicity. All publicity is good publicity, sadly. So, but yeah, there is that, y'all, for Fortnite. All right, and I know I said uh, at the top of this that we were I was going to talk about the Mortal Kombat update as well. However, there's not really a whole segment that needs to be said on that one because it's it's a very short, sweet, like thirty seconds. So here it is as part of the sign off of this. Mortal Kombat 1 is releasing Takata and Farah to join the Mortal Kombat 1 franchise roster. Uh, Farah will be a, a sidekick and Takata will be a playable character. So it's going to be really fun and I'm excited. Uh, this is an interesting take on Takata than, that we have not seen before and they have made him just look nasty as hell. So, but for a recap slash wrap up wherever you want to call this we got to see uh, world of warcraft is shaping up to be uh an epic conclusion of dragonflight as we're seeing that they are prepping very hard for the release of war within which debuts august 26th just a few days uh, before the end of the month and war within you can bet your sweet ass i'm going to be playing i'm excited for it there's uh, new classes new races new uh events new storyline and it's just going to be great. So we have that coming. We also have Phasmophobia announced earlier this week that they will be releasing to console and it will be uh, cross playable during the Halloween event and it will all be released and updated to the exact same time. So whenever the PC gets updated, the console will get updated, the VR system will get updated. So it's amazing to see that and they're working with Unity to get this all done. Um, only hiccup they're having right now, as uh, you heard earlier on, is the voice to chat uh, feature is not uh, fully up there and running right now. You have to do text to chat in order for it to work. So voice is not um, up and running right now, but we'll keep you up to date as that information becomes available. Baldur's Gate 3 is game one, uh, their biggest patches and most desired patches yet uh, called Patch 7. It's coming out on in September. And then we also have... Fortnite's goofy ass accidentally revealed the Pirates of the Caribbean collaboration, which starts July 19th, which is just in a few days from this recording, uh, because they accidentally released about the pass for it and, you know, messed up there. Uh, so new things are coming to that. And then, of course, season four of Call of Duty is wrapping up this week as we speak. Uh, the, the week eight just started uh, the day of this recording, the segment of the recording, uh, July 17th. And it will conclude July 25th, making July 26th the 24th, sorry. Wow. Season 4 will conclude July 23rd. Season 5 kicks off July 24th. And with Season 5, we have their WWE collaboration. We have uh, new maps coming that are 6v6. We have new modes coming out, which I'm excited for. Called, uh, COD Warrior with all the mini games as well. Uh, Warzone is getting two new resurgence. Uh, modes inside of it. We're also gaining a new POI added to uh, yours extend from uh, uh, It's going to be the Superstore. There we go Ugh. Uh, From Warzone 1 so that's gonna be one that a lot of people have been craving for uh, Rog was super excited for that one. We saw the new weapons. We got to see the new roadmap for season 5 uh, for like the new jack attachments the new weapons the new sectors the new operators and so much more. So I hope you made it this far. If you did, thank you so much for tuning in, hanging out and listening to the rambling for the past, I guess, hour at this point, I think it is. Uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you click the like button, smash the subscribe button to stay up to date and get alerted. You need to hit the bell icon. So where you do get notified when we go live. And of course, if there's a game you want us to look into and cover on our weekly updates, comment down below if you are looking forward towards any of these games and their updates again comment down below let us know uh, i'm thoroughly excited like super excited for world of warcraft's ending and beginning i'm super excited for what's to come for call of duty which is weird because i've never freaking excited for call of duty so it'll be great uh but until next week everyone thanks so much for tuning in take care stay safe and we'll see you
on next week's news update concerning video games. Till then, everyone, take it easy.